In today's video, we're going to unbox, install, and review a brand new product from MagSafe that has a new type of biometric security system that we think you're going to love. Thanks for joining us on Shoot the Series. My name is Ed Thorell, and we'd like to thank all of you for tuning in again. And if you haven't done it already, be sure to hit the like, the share, and subscribe buttons so you won't miss out on a single episode. Today, we're really fortunate, and we've been looking forward to this day, to get a brand new box from our good friends at MaxSafe. And what they've done is they've sent us one of their brand new high-technology models that actually is what they call their under desk model. And we're unboxing it to show you how all of this arrives. It comes with a card so that you can register the warranty. It comes with a startup guide that will give you the instructions that you need for getting initialized uh, biometrically as well as programming in your own code as well as some of the different features. It comes with a installation guide for either mounting it to the top surface of a piece of furniture or like we're going to day, do today, uh, the underneath the desk model. They also supply it with a couple of different patterns that give you a little bit of versatility on how this is going to mount up. And it also comes with some hardware packs. Uh, the first one has a key fob with two backup keys in case, you know, the batteries go dead. It also comes with the screws and the hardware that you're going to need to install it, as well as some rudimentary tools for doing the installation. Let me take this out of the box. I'm pretty excited about this. All right. So while you're looking at that, let me tell you about some of the cool features that it comes with. It comes with a patented biometric vein recognition technology. And this way, um, if you have anything on your fingers, whether it's sweat, moisture, or oil, it can actually scan through those using your veins, which is actually something that is individual for every single person. It also comes with three-way entry. Not only does it have the biometric pad, but it has a digital keypad that you can um, set up with your own personal code or a backup key to get into the back. It also has what they call uh, a vein capacity of 50, meaning you could actually program this with 50 different fingers or for 50 different people. It also has large capacity and it's made out of high quality carbon steel. One of the best features is that it's approved by California DOJ. It comes with a free lifetime warranty and a 30 day money back guarantee. It's also worth talking about the fact that MagSafe comes with four different models of gun safe. This one is the under desk safe model, but they also have the drop down vault the two-gun vault, and the pistol safe. And if you use the link that we provide, you'll be able to get a savings of 30% off. All right, before we actually do the installation, we want to spend a little bit of time talking about the biometric vein technology, which is patented. This is something that MagSafe has a leg up on the entire competition. But we want to spend some time talking about that technology and doing some demonstrations. Uh, before we actually install it. One of the things that sets Mac safes apart from the other biometric um, gun safes is the fact that rather than just having a biometric reader which identifies your fingerprint, this uses a type of technology that actually reads the structure of your veins in the second knuckle on your finger. So while you might have something on your finger that might um, 
skew the read and not allow you to open it with a regular biometric safe that only reads fingerprints. This allows you to have your fingers oily, dirty, wet, or whatever to get past that so that in a pinch, when your hands may not be clean, the gun safe is still operable. Now, what we want to do is we want to start with a baseline and show you how it works with a clean, dry finger. Okay, it opens. No problem. But we've also picked up four random types of material just out of the kitchen in order to simulate different things that you might have to go through. We have dishwater uh, with a little bit of soap in it. We have some olive oil as well as some steak sauce and some ketchup. Let's just start with the soapy water just in case things went south while you were washing the dishes. Hmm. Make sure you've got a little bit here on that second knuckle because that's where it reads from. Okay, dish soap, that works. All right, clean this up just a little bit. Clear the palette so we get a clear read. The second one that we'll be working with here is olive oil. Okay. but I want to try that again. Bear with me. Science doesn't happen right away. Sometimes you have to work at it. Okay, olive oil, success. I think the problem was the way I was placing my finger in the port. So we'll call that human error. Okay. All right. We are going to try some steak sauce. We're not going to tell you the brand because we got to be concerned with branding here. But there's just enough to give this a try. All right. I'm being very careful, but yeah, it's not like in the steak sauce. I want to make sure this is clean so we get as good a read as possible. Okay. Last one, ketchup. Okay. Not liking the ketchup. Okay, well, I'm not a scientist, I'm not an engineer, but it could be that because the dish soap with the water and the olive oil are basically transparent, it might get a cleaner read. And because the steak sauce and the uh, ketchup are more opaque, it may not be able to see through the color or there might be something that's blocking it. Um, what I can say though, is that if you have oil on your fingers or water on your fingers that it will still open up and function um i can't tell you about other substances just the four that we tried here which i think is a pretty good demonstration of what works and what doesn't work well we've had a chance to get it installed and now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of how it all works um we we've we've gone through the, the various procedures for getting it programmed to work off the, the veins. And it's important to notice that the veins are gonna pick up off this second knuckle 
not necessarily off the tab. So that when you insert your finger into the port, you want to make sure you insert it all the way in until it bottoms out. And then it opens up. You're going to notice that it doesn't spring all the way out, that you're going to have to assist it, but it at least gets the conversation started. It has enough room in the safe for, in my case, a full-size XD, which we're showing safe and clear. Um, in my opinion, um, a full-size with a, uh, a pistol light attached is going to give you probably the, uh, the best uh, no compromise uh, for, you know, if you have to use a pistol in, indoors, and I pray nobody ever has to. But um, it's got a good-sized drawer that will handle a full-size pistol with a light on it, which is, I think is a big, uh, a big selling point in that the compartment is not so small that you are only limited with small guns. I think that's a good thing to, to, to supply it with. It's also worth noting that once that you have it all programmed, you can also program in your uh, key code, which also opens it up. But frankly, I'm probably never going to use the key code because using the biometric reader only requires one motion rather than four. And frankly, it's just so much easier and faster. One of the things that I also like is the fact that it has a interior light which stays on for a few moments that are going to help um, light up the gun, especially when it's dark. Um, the blue light, I'll do this again so you can see this, um, the blue light isn't going to affect your, um, your night vision. Um, it also comes with an option to where you can remove the beep by holding down the one position. That will clear it. And now you can open it without the beep. And if you want the beep, if you like the beep, all you have to do to reinstall it is hold the, the number one button down. And then you get your beat back. Okay. So what we've done is we basically just changed the mode. Um, other modes that you need to be aware of are it has an alarm mode. So that if you put in five incorrect tries, either with the, uh, the buttons or with the biometric, it is actually going to set an alarm which is going to go off for two minutes. Trust me, I don't really feel like setting it off. But all the instructions for showing how it works in that particular mode is in the instructions. Um, it also has a low battery mode. And it's worth prefacing the comment that it runs off of these Duracells. Now, if for some reason the batteries start to get low, Instead of having the blue outline buttons that you would normally get, it would be yellow. So if you start seeing your keypad show up as yellow, that means the batteries need to be changed out. It's fairly straightforward the way they set up the instructions. Now, there's enough room in here, like I said, for putting in a full-size pistol. Um, it's also worth noting that the programming button is on the inside, right in here. So you have to take this little blister off out of the way so that you can actually access the button inside. And the little blister button goes right back on top to protect it so that you don't accidentally push that button and, you know, have to start all over. Let's spend a few minutes just talking about the drawer. And I'm going to demonstrate how the drawer comes out. But the first thing I want to do is show safe and clear with the XD and, and point out um, the process for removing the drawer. You're going to notice down here there's a small lever. And there's also another lever on the other side. And one of the things that I think the uh, 
uh, directions could be improved is spelling out that you're going to push one lever up as you push the other lever down. Um, it's not real intuitive in the instructions, so it's worth mentioning it. Okay, we've got one over here, which you're not going to see, and one over here that you are. You're going to push down on the right as you push up on the left to get the door to disengage. And from here, you can actually see that within this compartment here is where the latch is. And you can actually see where the design of the latch is from right here. So the latch is secured. The latch is not what I would consider something to be a weak point in the design because the latch is completely enclosed and you have to actually remove the drawer. There's not much of an issue with anybody trying to jimmy the latch because it's just not accessible. Um, these are the springs right here that are going to push the drawer out. Um, I think in follow-up models, the, the springs should actually be more robust um, so that it pushes out better. Um, the springs are light duty enough that I really, um, you know, they work, but I think they could work better. I think that because you've, you've got that kind of motion in it, it's, it's not necessarily a strong spring, and I think that's an area that could be improved upon. Um, you'll also notice, I'm going to set this here, uh, spend a little bit more time talking about the batteries, because I think that it's uh, a, a good feature in that, you know, it takes, um, you know, the standard uh, double A's, which is, which is good. They're easier to find. What I think would actually be a stronger design is if you access the batteries from the inside of the drawer so that these can't be tampered with. And I think it would also benefit in the system if uh, it was offered with rechargeable batteries or if it had some sort of like a USB C port type drive so that if your batteries did wear out, you could plug them into say something like your laptop just to get enough of initial charge so that you could open up the unit and be able to get to the batteries and change them out. Um, I'm not real, real happy with this particular design of enclosing the batteries up front. Um, I just think it could be done better. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think if they make a Mark II Mod II, that um, it would benefit by keeping the batteries enclosed and secure. And I, I've seen that on other models, including the USB-C port, as well as having, um, you know, a battery port on the inside. It's, it, it's not a deal breaker. I just think it's something, it's something that could be improved upon. Um, this gives you a chance here to see these latches. These latches are made out of plastic, and I'm going to flip it over and show you the other side also. And I think it would actually benefit if both of those parts were made out of either steel or aluminum. So you would have something that was just less likely to break over time. And I don't think that these are necessarily high stress parts, but I still think it would benefit by going with um, metal parts there. Um, beyond that, in order to reinstall it, you wanna make sure that your rails are lined up on both sides. So you line up your rails, and I find it's good to hold it here. There's a little, not to say an access port, but an indentation where you're able to manipulate the two at the same time. Now, keep in mind that when you're reinstalling it, you're going to come up against a friction point, and you want to push past that friction point to
to get it past those locks. And there you go. You're back in business. If you take a look in the, the, the show notes or the information box on the video, there is a link included. And if you follow that link, you can get a pretty substantial 30% discount by using the code that we provide if you would like to order up and, and receive one of these safes. And it's a keeper. I'll be using this. Once I reinstall it, um, it's something that, you know, I'd spend a little bit more time with and make it, you know, to fit my desk a little bit better. I really have a lot of confidence in this product and, and I'm, I'm really glad that they sent it along for us to use because once I get this bolted up, try to get it back. I, I really hope that, you know, the time that we've spent talking about this product is going to give our viewers a little bit better idea of how the product all works together. And we'd really like to thank you for, you know, joining us here on Shoot of the Series and hope that we've given you some better information so that, you know, you can make decisions and get good products that will work for you. Um, I'd like to thank everybody on the team. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to hit the like, the share, and subscribe so you won't miss a single episode. And all that being said, thanks for joining us. Y'all take care.